Hello everyone, again, here is part two of lesson 14. We left off on uh, level eight or bubble eight. We had just used code to make the apple change into a pear after the scale is was greater than two. So let's go ahead and continue on to bubble nine. For bubble nine, if you are in my class, I asked you to just focus on activity C. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at activity C. I will go over A and B just in case you decide you want to do those, but I'm going to start with activity C. Then you can skip A and B. You can skip forward if you don't need to. Alien celebration. Make the alien dance when the spaceship reaches the top of the screen. Do this. Run the program to see how it works. Add a conditional that detects when the spaceship is in the sky and sets the sprites animation to alien dance. So here we have the spaceship and once it hits the sky, we want the alien to dance. There's an animation called alien dance. <clears throat> so we need to add a conditional. So let's go ahead and add a conditional. Control conditional right here where, where it says where the common is located when the spaceship reaches the top of the screen set the alien animation to alien dance. So what are we asking the computer? What's the Boolean expression that we should have here? If what? If what? Has to do with spaceship, right? When the spaceship is in the sky. So basically when the Y coordinate of the, oh, it's not letting me run the program because I still have this in here. But when the Y coordinate of the spaceship is high enough, then we want the, um, the, the animation of the alien to change. So let's think about how that would be. So if the spaceship starts down here, look at the coordinates right here. If the spaceship starts here, say the Y coordinate is, where does it start at? It's at 200. All right, the Y coordinate starts at 200, which is right about here. So the spaceship is gonna go up, 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 and the sky is right about here at 110. So once the spaceship Y coordinate is less than 110, then we want the sprite to dance. I don't know if it's 110 or let's see. Mm, like right here. Oh, about 75. Okay. So once the spaceship goes past this point here, then we want the alien to dance, which is about 75. So once the Y coordinate of the spaceship is less than 75, then we change the animation. So let's go ahead and drop that conditional. If the spaceship.y is less than 75, spaceship.y, we need sprite.y. And we need to change that to spaceship because we're talking about the spaceship. Once the Y coordinate of spaceship is less than 75, and we can change that as we, as we try the program, we can adjust that. But once that's true, what do we need to do? We need to set the aliens animation, the sprites animation to alien dance. So we need to change the animation. So we just need to select sprite.set animation. We're not creating a new sprite. One mistake that I see is that a lot, uh, a, a lot is that people will use these two blocks, but we're not creating a new sprite. We're just changing the animation of a sprite that already exists, which is the alien. So I'm going to change the name, alien, and the animation will then become alien dancing. Sorry, not standing, alien dance. So once the Y coordinate of the spaceship is less than 75. The animation of alien will change to alien dance. Let's try it out. It looks kind of funny, but, and I think the eyes disappeared, but that's the animation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but you did it. There we go. Go ahead and click finish. Continue. I'm going to quickly go over A and B just in case you would like to do those. 
Boolean expressions. The simplest Boolean expressions are questions that the computer can answer true or false. Another way to say is, uh, this is that Boolean expressions evaluate to true or false. Can you modify the values of the sprite properties so that each of the Boolean expressions evaluates to true? Read through the entire program to see how sprite 1 and sprite 2 are being created and which properties are compared. For each of the Boolean expressions, identify the sprite properties being compared. Change the code in the first 11 lines only so that each of the console.log statements print true. First, right here. So here are, this is where we're going to change some of the code. These are the statements that we want to be true. First one, sprite2.x equals sprite2.y. So we want sprite2, the x coordinate and the y coordinate to be equal. So how do we do that? We can either make both of these 300 or we can make both of these 200. I'm just going to make both of these 200. So now sprite2.x, the x coordinate is equal to the y coordinate. Cool, that should come out to true. The next one, sprite2 rotation should be less than 40. Let's check it out. Sprite2 rotation right now is set to 60. So what value can I use so that this statement here comes out to true? Anything less than 40, right? So I can use 30. Sprite2 rotation is 30, which is less than 40. That is true. The next one, sprite one dot scale is equal to sprite two scale. So we want both of these scales, sprite one dot scale to be equal, sprite two dot scale. Right now, the first one is 1.5 and 0 0.5. What should we change it to? We can make them both 0 0.5. We can make them both 1.5. Doesn't matter. I'm going to make them both 0 0.5. And now they're equal. Fourth comparison, sprite dot sprite one dot x should be greater than 150. So let's go ahead sprite one. The first number is the x coordinate. So greater than 150, what can we use here? 151, 152, 153, 200, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say um, 175. That's greater than 150. And our last comparison, sprite2.y should be less than 200. Sprite2.y should be less than 200. So this has got to be less than 200. So I guess I'll make it 180. But there's something else let's see if we catch it let's go ahead and click run and let's see if all of these come out to be true all right so down here in the console we see false true 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 but we checked the first one what happened why did that one come out false can you figure it out yeah so at the end we changed the uh, sprite2.y to be less than 200 that's coming out true because we changed it to 180. But remember that the first comparison said sprite2.x is equal to sprite2.y. So we also actually need to change the x value here. And now when we run, we should see that they come out to be all true. All right. So again, this is just some practice with Booleans and understanding what these statements mean. The second uh, activity is similar to activity C. We just need to use a conditional and change an animation. All right, dropped soup. The soup should spill out of the bowl when it turns upside down. Do this, run the program to see how it works. Add a conditional that detects when the bowl is upside down and sets the sprites animation to be an empty bowl. I think that's already in here. Yeah, empty, just regular bowl. So we're running the program. And we have to uh, detect when the sprite is upside down when the sprite is upside down. So we need our if statement. And we need to think about what uh, Boolean expression we're going to use here. So we need to figure out how do we tell that the bowl is upside down? Um, so as it's rotating, at which point, what degree does the bowl become upside down? So think about um, I'm trying to see here, my pen. If I start upwards and I'm rotating, 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 now I'm upside down. 
How many degrees is that? Starting straight up, a right angle, and another right angle. And then once I'm past that point, right, that's where we want the bowl to switch. So 180 degrees. So once the degrees is greater than 180, then we become an empty, or not we, but the picture should become an empty bowl. All right. So let's go ahead and look for the math. Greater than. And we're looking for the rotation. Once the rotation value of our soup bowl is greater than 180, then we need to change the animation. So we need to use the set animation block. Again, remember, we're not creating a new sprite. We're simply using the sprite that already exists, which is soup, and we're changing the animation to just bowl. So once the rotation is greater than 180, set the animation to bowl. So let's try it out. And there we go. Once it hit that point of 180, a little bit greater than 180, then it changes the animation, as you can see here. All right, go ahead and click Finish. Continue. And last one, bubble 10. Remember, I'm not grading uh, any of the bubbles here, so I will be going through this, but um, you should still understand how to do this because you will be using it in future lessons. Magic dinosaur. Make the dinosaur turn into a pterodactyl when it reaches the sky. Run the code to see how it works. Add a conditional that will change the dinosaur's animation to a pterodactyl when it reaches the sky. So we've kind of done this with the rocket ship. Um, so here goes a pterodactyl, and once the pterodactyl reaches right about here, so right at about, I guess we could say 200, then we change the animation. So once the Y coordinate becomes less than 200, it should be a pterodactyl. So again, we need our if statement, our if block. And we're saying once the dinosaur Y coordinate is less than 200, go ahead and try it yourself and then check with the video. All right, once the dinosaur uh, Y coordinate, so we need sprite.y, and this is called dinosaur. Once the dinosaur Y coordinate is less than 200, right, all, all of this up here, if you look at the Y coordinate, all of this right here is less than 200. So once that happens, then we want to change the animation of the dinosaur. Again, you're not creating a new sprite. You're just using the sprite that already exists, dinosaur. And you're changing the animation so that it is a pterodactyl. All right, let's go ahead and reset and run. Boom. So again, once that this statement became true, dinosaur.y is less than 100. Once that became true, then the computer did what was inside the if statement, which is change the animation. Ta-da! All right, um, that was bubble 10 uh, for my class. Bubble 11 is optional. But I do recommend that you try to do activity A um, if you would like to using what we've been doing, right? So trying to get this balloon to pop and say pop, right? So it's all about just changing the animation. For this one, thinking about what property are you working with so that that changes the animation and then read through the description it kind of gives you a hint here and it introduces something called the visible property so read through this try it out if you have questions send me a message on schoology all right but again you only need to go up to bubble 10 just like we said in the notebook one through ten and that is it for lesson 14. i will see you all in class or in the next video goodbye everyone